do you ever feel like your confidence is holding you back from your ability? Me do. Me do? Me too. Mm -hmm. So, today I want to say some words about how I've noticed that one of the biggest holdbacks for me in my time as a tattooist was the confidence. And I don't mean becoming a tattooist and all that shit, and, you know, having the confidence to go out there and seek my dream job and all that. And I mean literally, sometimes, the hesitation to pull a straight line in a tattoo. Confidence, inevitably, comes with time. The more you tattoo, the more confident you'll become because you'll just be more confident with your trade, more confident in your ability to tattoo. But I feel like sometimes early on in your career, you can use the lack of confidence, which is completely natural, as an excuse for reasons that you can't do things. In reality, that isn't a lack of confidence. That's a hesitation and that's a worry that you're gonna do it wrong or you're not gonna impress or you're worried about people's opinions and stuff. When you get taught to drive, they always tell you, don't hesitate. You go, you just go, you do it. You don't stop in the middle of the road and go, oh, should I have taken that? Oh my God, should I have let that person in front go first? Should I have let that put? No, man, you just make that pass. You know, unless it's dangerous and you're about to smash into the back of someone's car, then yeah, obviously stop. But that's why a lot of the time, people fall short of like a single pass line or putting the right amount of contrast in the toe. So I'll go through a few examples of how a natural, but annoying lack of confidence can hold parts of your tattooing back that it doesn't need to. Saying that you might be able to work on a bit and understand yourself a bit more. If you could understand that it's your confidence that's holding you back in them small areas, then maybe you'll approach it different next time around. It's worth some fault, no? One of the biggest things that I still do to this day now is worry about people's opinions of my work. A lot of the time, when you're drawing and designing a tattoo and you've got that good sketch ready for the next day, you could show that off. You could totally put that online. And then this day and age where you should be, well, you should be, you're supposed to be posting frequently to keep your socials up. Why not post the sketch? I see loads of artists doing that. I love seeing the before, the sketch, and then seeing the tattoo, the after. In your head, you're over-exaggerating people's opinions on your work. I do it. Like, I'll think, I don't want to put that online, I get worried what people think, and really, if they don't like something, they'll do exactly what you do when you don't like something. You just don't pay any attention and move on. So what? You'll catch a few people who do like it. They're the people you're gonna grab their interest and maybe they'll come and get something from you. So, you know, if it's a, if, if you've put a lot of time in that sketch for that tattoo, then why not post it? Put it online. Let the world see that shit. Everyone loves to see it before. Everyone loves to see a work in progress. They love seeing how the sketch was first and then the tattoo was at the end. And also your tattoos. Don't be afraid of what people's initial opinions are gonna be. No one has a bad opinion. People either don't have an opinion and don't care or have a good opinion. Think, oh, that's cool. And just because artists, you think artists are better than you, doesn't mean they are. In their head, there's a million other artists who are better than them. They all did it. They all started with something that wasn't great or they didn't think was great, sorry. And they posted it online. Post it. Be proud of your art. Let everyone see it. I love seeing people put things online, like artwork they've done online, being proud to share it. You should be proud to share it, man. You've put effort into that shit. Get it online, get it out there, show it off. Everyone needs to see it. Everyone needs to see your progress. I don't want to just start on Instagram after 10 years of drawing because you've waited to be good first and then your artwork's just sick straight away. You look like a fake account. I've report you a spam. No, man. Get that shit out there. It wants to see your progress. Another area where confidence might 
hold you back, and it does still to me now, is making sure you're explaining to customers that the size and placement of a tattoo will benefit the outcome. You know, a customer might come in and you know want their uh, tattoo done on their forearm, but let's say, for example, on the back of the forearm, but let's say, for example, it's a symmetrical design. Now, I'm not saying that won't work on the back of the forearm, but many a time, putting a symmetrical design, let's say here, one side curves different to the other side. So when you put that on, it's gonna drop one side and go up the other side. And trying to fix that mentally in your head on Photoshop to warp it enough that it looks, nah, it's just not gonna work. Sometimes, not all the time. It's just an example. Whereas it might look better on the front of the forearm because there's a larger, flatter surface. So you might be able to get away with it more on the front and it look better. And there's no harm in telling your client that. They're not just gonna run out of the shop screaming at how much of an arsehole you are and that you should be canceled. No, They're, nine times out of them, people appreciate it. The extra one, might they might just say, no, this is my tattoo, I want it how I want it. And that's fair, but you still need to tell them, even if they're the most arrogant, angry, annoying person in the world, you still gotta tell them. Out of you. Just respect for yourself. Tell them your artwork's going on them and tell them that they will enjoy the look of that tattoo better if it is in a place where the design works best. Okay? Then it's the same the same goes for the size of the tattoo. Sometimes sometimes the design might not have it might have a lot of detail in. So if you put it too small, you're gonna lose all that detail. It's just gonna look muddled and eventually you know, in years to come, when the lines inevitably blur a little bit, it's just gonna look like a mess, a blurry mess. You want a bit of space on that. You want that, but like, for example, let's see. Here's the tattoo I did today. I did this tattoo today. You can see that shit over it's like highlighted to crap. So I did this tattoo today. If I'd gone any smaller than that, well actually it was a bit bigger than that. Let's say that is the smallest I could have gone with it. If I'd gone smaller than that, I would not have been able to get all the details in the skull. Hopefully you would have probably seen this now on Instagram, but lots of little details with a free liner in there. If I'd gone too small with that, there's no point putting it in. It would all be in the exact same, like the distance would have been, just been pointless. So yeah, explaining to your customer that the sizing is a key to making that tattoo look good. One of the key to making that tattoo look good. But again, it's about having the confidence to have that repertoire with someone, you know, having that conversation where you know best. Because the act of knowing best as a professional does take some time to get used to because they're coming to you to buy something, buy your product. You wanna please the customer as much as possible, obviously. But at the same time, you've got to have respect for them. You've got to have respect for them as a person and for yourself as an artist, that the artwork you are giving them is the best it can be. Remember, you're in charge. They've come into your space. Your words mean a lot, mean loads. And they'll appreciate that in the long run. Pulling a straight line or pulling a long line in a tattoo requires confidence, requires some balls. You've really got to think about your anchor point and where you're resting your fingers. Your fingers? Your fingers when you're pulling that line. You don't want to hover above it and pull the line like this. No, man, you've got to be in there and you've got to commit to that line because that's where the problem lies with no commitment to the line. You see a line, you could even like ghost run it in your head. You know, I think, yeah, it's good. So put my wrist there put, and then run the line. I just rush in there and start running. Because you want to do as many lines as possible in a single pass. And you can easily pull a line towards you, you know, like run it across your wrist. But I see a lot of people, they kind of do a little bit of line, stop, do a little bit of line. And then you get these little bumps in the line that you then got to fix. And a lot of the time when I've spoke to artists or they've spoke to me or, you know, whatever, we've just been in conversation about it. They've just said, oh yeah, I, just, I kind of hesitated. I should have just pulled up. Don't hesitate, just pull the line. 
It's easier to fix a faint line than it is to carry on a line from a stop, in my opinion. Like if you put a line and it's black, 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 and the ink goes, and you haven't noticed until you wipe it away and there's like half a line there, just follow over that line, easier. And because it was one pass, you have room to make another pass for sure without ruining the skin. If you keep doing the dots, the dots, the dots, then you've got to straighten out the little bumps and yeah, it's just too much. It's just way too much. Oh, I've said this word so many times, but yeah, I feel like it is a confidence thing pulling a straight line or being or committing to a straight line and not hesitating halfway through the line thinking that you might not get it out thinking that you know you uh, you might not be able to pull the full line in one pass when you most probably can a lot of the time it isn't your ability that's stopping you to do that it's your thought process and your oh, what's the word oh, there's that saying isn't there about you know the worry that you have being the reason that it doesn't happen when really it can happen it can happen <laughs> I don't know you know what I mean there's that saying a big one I've noticed for years and I had this with a few artists I've worked with in the past as well is the confidence to add black to add enough black a lot of people and I get this when you're tattooing and you're grey shading it looks darker than it is going to be when it's healed. So you put less black in, thinking, oh, I don't want to put too much black in. I think that's very fair at the beginning. When you see enough come back, though, if you try and remember the mindset you was having while you was tattooing and you see them healed, then um, you start to realise that, yeah, I could definitely add more black. And having good contrast, especially in black and grey tattoos, is key. Like, you want to have good contrast. That's why I think a lot of the time it is good to use all your shades instead of just using black and whipping it out. Unless you that's the style you're going for and you're doing some kind of black and grey traditional or something like that. Using the tones. I di I do it still now. I'll put on the opposite end, I'll put too much black in, thinking out oh, it'll heal fine, because the dots are spaced. You know, sharp Jason. It's black. Dots are going to be dark. Now I like to try and separate tattoos with, let's say, like that piece, this piece I showed you today, yeah? So, you know, we had, I did a lot of black around the outside, but I kept the skull and the hand really light. I used like a medium grey on the skull only, even for the details and stuff. Just a medium grey and the rest of it was black. And although I haven't seen it healed yet, after the sauna died down at the end, we got a picture, it looked lovely. Like it looked, the contrast was great. I put loads of black in the background, not solid black. I still lined everything and then black shade over the top, but the lines popped through and had real depth. And that's what black is important for, creating depth. Don't be afraid to put black in your tattoo. Bear in mind the contrast. So if you haven't put much black in one area, then you put solid black, like actual black as opposed to light gray around it, then it will make it pop. It will have the contrast and it will look like an exciting thing to look at. You know, if you just use loads of black, it's just going to be loads of black. If you don't use any black, you're going to have thick black lines. Or if you don't use lines, you're going to have no lines and then just washy gray. And it won't have the edges, the hard edges that you need for that to pop. That I feel like that's another thing that comes down to confidence is the ability to put that black in there and be adamant and not hesitant about where that black's going and what you're doing with it. Black is like the secret weapon, man. If you can get the contrast and the tattoo right and add enough black, God, man, the amount of tattoos I look at on Instagram and think, fuck, I'd be terrified to put that much black in. Even now, big chunks of black here and there and there'd be like greys everywhere else and it would just look ah, so good. And I think, oh, I'm gonna do that. And then I go to do it and then I hesitate. And I went, no, I can't put that much black in. I just can't do it. I just can't do it, I'm not gonna do it. And then I don't do it and then I regret it tattoo didn't look bad but it definitely would have looked better if I'd put that black in just, just gotta go for it sometimes man. if the planning before looks great it will look great on the toe just get over that voice in your head that's telling you that you're wrong because you're not wrong 75% of the time sometimes I've done some of the best toes I've ever done in my life and I haven't put it online because the photo has been bad that's really frustrating really frustrating I hate it when that happens. 
you need to have the confidence to tell them that you're not going to do it. Be blunt. Be straight up. Walk up to them and tell them. Just say, look, listen, I'm sorry. It's not really for me, but recommend some other artists who you think might want to do it. Or just say, I personally don't think this tattoo is going to look nice. Nothing wrong with that. You don't have to do it because they've come in and offered you money to do the tattoo. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. You know, you want to do work that you're going to be proud of. Then do work you're going to be proud of. Money or no money, it's a respect to you as an artist and it's a respect to them as a customer for you to say, nah, man, I can't do that for you. Nope, not happening. You need to work or letting go of those fears. The fears and the hesitations you have as an artist. It will halter your ability and your technicality as a tattooist if you're too worried about not putting too much black in. Uh, too worried about putting too much black in. Too worried about whether or not you can finish that line. Too worried about what people's opinions are of your work. Too worried about what that customer's gonna say if you tell them you don't want to tattoo. Once you can let go of those fears, the only thing holding you, back, holding you back will be the technical ability, and that will come with time. So I don't like cocky, egotistical people, but I love confident people. Confidence is hard to adopt and maintain in a job like this, but once you cracked it, and once you're confident within yourself, I'm not talking about you don't need to spread this on everyone else, but once you are confident, in yourself and your ability then all that you have to worry about then is your technical ability and that's easier said than done i still to this day worry about things and toes i'm a lot better now at talking to people 100 percent better now at talking to people than i used to be i'm really good at talking to people i can you know, walk straight up to them, tell them how I think it is and that be that. But when it comes to actual tattoos, sometimes I'm very hesitant. Thanks again. Thanks for letting me have a ramble at you. I really appreciate it, as always. I know this is still early days and this is probably like what, my sixth video or something like that. I've started a Patreon. I'd really appreciate if people could support me. Go join that. I'll be putting videos up on there exclusively first. And also there's a buy me a coffee thing in the link below so please like and subscribe i love you guys and i'll see you on the flip of the floor